In this podcast, what we're looking at are two main questions. How long is a day and how long is a month? Now, uh, the obvious answer that most people throw out is the day is 24 hours and a month varies in length between 28 days and 31 days. Well, that is true, but it also depends on what kind of day or month you're actually talking about. Um, there are really two kinds of days. There's a solar day and a sidereal day. <clears throat> It all depends on what you're using to measure uh, one day in. Uh, now, a solar day is obviously using the sun. And we've already talked a little bit about the motion of the sun. We know it rises in the east. And this is viewed from uh, Central Park in, in New York. It transit across the sky, or at least it appears to. We know it really isn't. Uh, it's just an effect caused by the Earth, uh, Earth's rotation. And then it eventually does set in the west. And again, this is due to the Earth's rotation. Now, if we back it up a little bit, um, we know that a, a, a normal day is 24 hours, but the question is, what are you really measuring when you're talking about a 24-hour solar day? Well, we're measuring the sun, and really we're measuring the sun from uh, one place in the sky, uh, and then determining how long it takes for the sun to return to that exact same point in the sky. And what we'll be doing here is using noon, all right? Noon is normally 12 o'clock, but really, uh, <clears throat> that's only dependent on your location. Noon is when uh, the sun is the highest, at its highest path in the sky. And that happens when it's halfway between east and west, or in other words, between it's halfway rising and setting. Um, to show where this is, what we can do is project certain lines Onto the uh, onto the sky here. This is known as the meridian. It's basically a line that runs from the south pole through the north pole, just like the prime meridian, but it's projected outwards from the Earth onto the sky. <clears throat> and uh, again, noon occurs when the sun reaches its highest point in the sky, which happens to be right when it's crossing. Meridian. In this case, if you look up the date, we've got April 4th, 2008, <clears throat> and 11.59. It's pretty close. We'll just go ahead and make it 11.59. There we go. 11.59. It's right on the meridian. And if we're looking at a solar day, what we should see is that when it goes to April 5th, 11.59, the sun should uh, appear to have gone all the way around the Earth and return to its highest point in the sky. So we're going to fast forward a little bit here. I'm just going to let it play. But uh, go a little bit faster. All right, so we see the sun returning back to the sky. It's April 5th, 8.14 in the morning. So let's let it continue. Getting closer and closer and closer. <clears throat> And we'll just keep stepping minute by minute and see what we get. So that's right about exactly halfway. And again, you can see that it's been exactly 24 hours from the sun being on the meridian, setting, rising, and then coming back to the highest point in the sky on this meridian. Again, noon, you should definitely want to uh, jot this down, noon is not necessarily 12 o'clock. It's pretty close here because we're on a uh, time zone line. When the sun is highest in the sky, and that occurs when it's right on this meridian, <clears throat> halfway between east and west. Technically, that happens pretty close to about 1240 uh, uh, in the daytime. So, Afternoon really doesn't start until about 12.41. So that's a solar day. A sidereal day, all right, is when we're not using the sun, uh, but we're using a star. So measuring a sidereal day, again, we're going to be using a star to measure how long it takes for that st bright star, in this case, Rigel, to return to the same point in the sky. Now, the common sense answer would be that it should be 24 hours, right? Because the sun appeared to rise and set uh, and return to that high point in the sky 
24 hours, the stars are going to appear to rise or set and then rise again, and it should be 24 hours. At least that's the common thought. So let's just go ahead and either confirm or uh, prove that wrong. So it's 11.25, December 29th, and you can notice that I've also changed uh, the location. We're in Pendleton, and <clears throat> we've chosen uh, a bright constellation, uh, constellation Orion, uh, very easily uh, seen in, uh, tonight if you go out, if it's clear. And we're going to specifically looking at Rigel. And I'll leave it highlighted so that you can pick it out. And we'll just play through uh, a full uh, day and see where it is. So there goes Rigel, setting. Sun will be rising here in a few minutes. Appearing to transit across the sky. Again, this is not an actual motion. It's just an apparent motion uh, because Earth's rotation is causing this effect. Sun is setting, so a few more hours here, and here comes Rigel. And we are going to step it through until it is right on that meridian. So we're at 10.55. Again, it was there at 11.25 before. And let's see, 11.21. If we went four more minutes, one, two, three, four, it's obviously been at 20, 24 hours, but it's no longer on the meridian. A sidereal day is actually four minutes shorter than a solar day. Now, why is this? So to describe why a solar day is different than a sidereal day, um, the main answer is just the Earth's revolution around the sun. Now, how is that causing it? Well, as you can see here in this first picture on figure 12, you can see that if you wanted to uh, have the sun at its high point in the sky, or if you're looking the other direction, that that star we use, Rigel, um, <clears throat> it would take 360 degrees rotation to return them to exactly where they were. Um, but that's not necessarily the case because Earth is not just rotating on its axis, but it's also revolving around the sun. Now, since the sun is much closer than a distant star, well, let's look at that solar day first. To return to 360 degrees, this would be the dashed line representing that. But the sun is no longer in that apparent path or position because the Earth has actually shifted its position. It's moved a little bit. <clears throat> so to return the sun to its uh, high point in the sky, its noon uh, rays, as it shows here, the Earth would have to rotate four more minutes worth of rotation in order to get the sun back to the high point in the sky. Since the stars are much, much, much farther away, they don't have an apparent shifting in position. They seem to be fixed in the night sky, uh, so we don't have this, uh, this uh, shift in relative position because of Earth's rotation around the sun. Uh, these stars are uh, basically fixed in the sky. That's what they look like. So all it takes is 360 degrees of rotation in order to get that uh, sidereal day. 